Hello and welcome to the Summer Blockbuster Color Grading Tutorial. If you would like to follow along, visit my site for all the footage source files. So what is the Summer Blockbuster look? Here we're watching a few clips from Battleship, which features probably the most common example of a Blockbuster style, the teal and orange treatment. It's pretty obvious, but the colour palette is made up of predominantly teal and orange. The skin tones are pushing towards warm, rich orange-brown, and everything else in the scene is pushing towards cool teals and blues. This results in maximum colour contrast and separation between the skin and everything else in the scene. Here is a variation of the same look. This is Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. There is still a large separation between the skin and the rest of the scene. The majority of the scene is still pushing towards teal and blue, but the skin is no longer a rich orange. It is now more natural in appearance. And this is Taken 2, which is another variation of the same style. These three examples are graded somewhat differently, but essentially they're all a variation of the same basic look. So there are two major aspects to how this look is put together. First, cool blues and teals are added to anything in the scene that is neutral in colour, or lies in the cool blue-green colour range. Second, anything in the warm colour range, such as skin, is brought back to neutral, or is warmed up further by adding yellow or orange. To illustrate both aspects of this look, here is a behind-the-scenes production still from Ghost Protocol. Notice neutral colours in the road and her coat, and pay attention to the colour of skin and hair. Now here is the same scene from the movie. If you pause this here and flick back to the production still, you'll notice how the neutral colours have picked up a blue-green tint, and at the same time her skin and hair look quite natural and have stayed relatively untouched. This is by no means a scientific comparison, but it gives us a good idea of what's going on. So why does this look so common? Why do colourists play up the warm cool separation? So here is the colour wheel, and here is the area that skin roughly occupies. Basic colour theory states that complementary colours when used together are particularly dynamic due to the maximum colour contrast between them. When placed next to each other, complementary colours pop and vibrate, which can be aesthetically pleasing. So the hues that are complementary to skin tones are in this area of the colour wheel, and it's no accident that this is where the teals and blues reside. So how do we achieve this look? Before we complicate things and start working with skin tones, let's concentrate on the first aspect of this look, introducing the cool colour. So back to Ghost Protocol again. The easiest way to decipher the cool aspect of this look is to find something in the film that is relatively neutral in colour and has the entire range of luminance values. So looking at production stills of this scene, I notice that the set is relatively neutral. There is a blue tint, but for our purposes, it's neutral enough. So let's stop and analyse one of these frames. Looking at the distribution of hues over luminance, this is what I see as represented on a luminance ramp. Starting from the darks, we see a cool blue, moving into a muted teal in the mids, which ends up fading to a neutral white in the highs. So how do we achieve this in Resolve? It's possible to get very close using one node and the lift gamma gain wheels, but I prefer to split it over two nodes and to use the log colour wheels for extra control and flexibility. The first node concentrates on the lows and mids. Using the shadow and mid wheels with their ranges adjusted, we are going to push them towards these colours. Notice how we're not actually adding teal to the mids. That is achieved in the next node. So the second node concentrates on the highs. With this node we're going to modify the high range so the highlight wheel reaches further into the lows and actually overlaps and affects the mids and a little bit of the shadows. It's not possible to do this with the previous node alone since in log mode there isn't enough overlap between the wheels. We want the overlap as this ties all the colours together and creates depth in the hue ramp. So to get the teals in the mids we're going to add some yellow green to the highs and this is the result. So now we've got our teal but our highlights are no longer neutral. To fix this we can add a third node and using a luminance qualifier we can desaturate just the highs. An alternate way is to go back to the first node and using our knowledge of colour theory we're going to add the complementary colour of the yellow green from node 2 to cancel out part of that correction. So now the highs are a bit purple pink but when we add node 2 again we get this. You can still see some of the effects of the purple pink but that is not entirely undesirable. In fact it's probably a more accurate match of the look compared to just desaturating the highs. To complete the look we'll do the same to the shadows, adding the complementary colour of node 1 to node 2 to cancel out the bottommost part of that correction. Now I'll show you how to achieve this inside Resolve. So here we are inside Resolve and we've got our footage loaded in. The first thing we want to do is go over to the raw tab and make sure we've got red colour 3 and red log film selected. I'm actually grading this through a Kodak 2383 LUT which you can grab from my site. Um, it's possible to grade this without a LUT, 
But if you're mimicking my wheel movements, the results are not going to be the same. So while we're in the raw tab, we're going to increase the ISO to 800 as the image is a bit dark. And I'm going to leave the color temperature at 5600 because it looks about right. Now in this first node, we're going to balance the image, but I'm going to switch over to log color wheels as they give me a bit more control. So what I want to do is bring out some of the detail from the watch face here. So using the offset wheel, I'm going to raise that up. And as you can see, the um, highlights are probably a bit bright now. So if I try to lower those using the highlight wheel, you can see it actually doesn't have much of an effect. So what I want to do is go to the high range and drop that to 0.333. And then when I try that again, that wheel's got much more of an influence. Now the uh, highlights are looking nice and creamy, but those shadows are probably a bit elevated. So I can take those down using the shadow wheel. And that looks better. Now I'm actually going to remove some of the saturation since uh, we're not actually dealing with that in this tutorial. So this area here is now looking a bit bright. I'm going to add another serial node and then using a circular power window, I'm going to roughly select the watch face here. And then I'm going to invert that selection. So we're working outside it and then using the offset wheel, I'm going to drop that down to about there. Now I'm going to create two more nodes and this node here is going to deal with the midtones and the lows and this node here is going to uh, mostly deal with the highs. Um, it's important that you put any uh, exposure changes or exposure um, corrections prior to those two nodes as it really affects the way that these nodes um, apply their corrections. Um, to really sell this look, it's crucial that you place your midtones in the correct um, position. Um, to show you that, I'm going to probably push this wheel more than I should. And um, you can see by default, the midtones coming in a bit too high, a bit bit more into the highlights than it probably should. So using the high range, we're going to drop that down to probably somewhere around there. Now I want some of that midtone to go into the, the lower shadow area as well. So I'm going to use the um, low range and that's looking about right. Now I'm going to drop the gain to 0.8. So that node has um, less of an effect. And now I'm going to reset this and we're going to put the correct color in now. Um, something around there. Now to get the teal into the uh, midtones, we're um, we're going to want to go to this node here and change the high range to 0.333. And I'm going to change the gain to 0.8 so it matches the other one. Now we can start bringing in that um, that color that's going to give us the um, the teal mids. Now we're getting our teal mids. But uh, those um, highlights are no longer neutral. So we go back to this node and without changing any of the high range, we're going to add the complementary color of that color we just added to cancel out the topmost part of that correction. So somewhere around there. Now that's looking about right. Um, and you can see that some of the original watch color is coming through in this part here. Um, you probably leave that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to push some blue in, into the shadows. And we can actually put more than what you think you need. Because we're going to go to this node here. And then I'm going to drop the low range. So we're only affecting the bottom most part. And then I'm going to add the complementary color of that color we just added. And see that starts to cancel it out. And then I'm going to drop this down. And... Uh, starting to look all right. Now I'm going to grab a copy of that or grab a still and then I'm going to delete these two nodes. Grab another still and now I can append that to any other grade that I'm doing and I don't have to rebuild those two nodes. So now I'll bring some skin tones into the mix. In the raw tab I've got the same setup as before and I'm still grading through a Kodak 2383 LUT. I'll start by increasing the ISO to 800 and then taking the color temperature down as the image is a bit warm. And I'll do the same with the tint to remove some of that green. Now in this first note, I'll balance the image. But before I do that, I'm going to zoom in and then reframe the shot. Now looking at this image, 
this area here, the shadows are probably a bit elevated and the highlights are probably a bit hot. So I'll start by bringing down those shadows and then I'm going to change the high range to 0.333 and I can bring those highlights down a bit. And I'll also add some saturation. Now this area here is probably looking a bit um, bright. So I'll add another node and then come in with a circular power window. And we'll roughly select him like that. And then invert that and then I can drop the um, offset. Now I'm going to add another uh, node and then a node parallel to that. And these two nodes here is where I treat my skin tones. But I'll talk about that in a second. So I'll append the nodes that we created before. And as you can see, they're probably a bit too intense. So I'll drop the gain by half to 0.4. And then I'll do the same on this node here. Now I'm going to add a layer mixer node. And by default, it's not connected right. So I'm going to delete this connection here and then connect it through there. Now whatever I qualify on this node here gets passed through and avoids being corrected by these two nodes. So this is where I qualify the skin. So I'm going to come in and select the skin like that. And then I'm going to make sure I'm only grabbing the um, most saturated parts of the skin like that. And then I'm going to increase the radius. Now, if I had more colors in this scene, I'd be quite wide on this to pass more colors through. But since it's only skin tones, I can afford to be quite tight like that. Now, you can see that the skin has been passed through, but it's coming through uh, probably a bit too intense. So I'll drop the gain 0.6 and that's looking better. Uh, looking at this area around here, it's probably a bit blue. So I'll go to this node and then I'll swing the midtones around to green like that. Now this node here is where I um, do the majority of my skin corrections and if you wanted a proper teal and orange look this is where you'd be adding um, adding the orange. But to me it looks about right. The only thing I want to do here is add a bit of coolness into the highlights so um, the skin looks like it's part of the scene. So since I've already qualified the skin I'm going to uh, copy that and then paste it in there. Increase again to 1 and then I'm going to drop the high range about there and then I can start in, um, adding a bit of coolness into the, the highs and there you can see. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail um, with what I do to the skins since that's for an entirely um, new tutorial but I'll show you one more thing. So what I like to do is select the reddest most part of the skin which is usually in the ears or the cheeks and I'm going to make sure it's only the most saturated part and I'll blur that a bit and what I like to do here is I'll bring the high range a bit using the shadow wheel I like to push in a bit more red and at the same time dropping this down like that and what that does is it makes the skin uh, look like it's alive. It, it brings a bit of life to the skin. So you can see the effect. It's it's quite subtle, but um, it goes a long way. Now I'll show you a few issues you're likely to encounter and a few ways to fix them. This is some footage I've graded using techniques I've just shown you. This is the original. Then I've added the cool component. Then I've qualified everything. I want to bypass the cool component. Which brings us to the first issue, which is unbalanced, warm and cool elements. To fix this, I start by going to the pass-through layer and dropping the gain. And that's usually going to be enough to match the two. But in this case, you can see that the shadows still don't quite match. Now, it's hard to see, so I'm going to exaggerate that a bit. Like so, generally speaking, you want the shadows in both components to match in hue, saturation and luminance. So you've got a single unified black running throughout the grade that really helps to glue and tie the look together. Now, there are a few places you can correct this. If it's an issue mainly with the skin, you can go to the skin node and using the shadow wheel, you can add a bit more blue green like so. But most likely it's going to be an issue with everything that's going through the pass through layer. So you can do it there as well. Now, if we remove the exaggeration and go back to that, you can see that the difference isn't actually that big. So sometimes what I like to do is do the um, correction on a node that sits above all my other corrections. So it's being applied to the cool component and the warm component. So it goes a step further to tie the two together. 
Now, if I switch that on, you'll see that there's a few other things going on as well. This is where I like to do my custom curves, um, my final exposure corrections, saturation corrections, and of course, that correction to the shadows. Now, at the same time, the highlights have to be unified to a certain extent as well. So if I go to the skin node, you can see that I'm pushing a bit of blue into the highs. To show you the next issue, I'm going to switch off these two nodes. And then if we um, adjust how much blue we're adding to the grade, by playing with this, you'll see that those cups aren't taking on much of the blue as they're quite saturated. Quite often you'll find that there's elements in your grade that are either pushing in the wrong hue direction or are too saturated and then will actually uh, break your grade. So what you need to do is go to the parallel nodes here, create another node, and then qualify whatever is giving you the problem and then correct it. So in this case, I'm going to drop the saturation. And if I apply the final um, correction or the final grade, you'll see that it's doing a little bit and it's going a long way in uh, preventing the grade from breaking. So that's my take on the summer blockbuster look. Make sure you visit my site for notes that accompany this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for future tutorials, get in touch.